Hey guys, and welcome to another video for Freshly Squeeze Samples. This is your host, John Grand, and today I'm going to be showing you how to sound design basses from scratch in F an Expert Record Serum. Let's go ahead and get started. So what I have here is a simple MIDI pattern that I've uh, taken from uh, this Art Bat song, Best of Me. And I wanted to show you how we can approach creating a sound from scratch using Serum with this bass line. So before we get started, let's just go ahead and listen to how it sounds. I'm gonna turn the volume down just a little bit so it doesn't blast your ears and that you can still hear me. All right, so that's a pretty basic sound, nothing too crazy. Let's go ahead and dive in. I think for this sound, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a restyled bass. So let's go ahead and set up our oscillators and make sure that we have our filter. I'm gonna set this to the MG Low 24. As you can see, it creates a curvature here that's just a little bit sharper and that's gonna be really useful for what we're gonna do next. Now, what I always love to do is I love using the envelope two and then setting that to my cutoff filter and this will create a nice little attack sound that you'll hear in a few seconds. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up the unison. This is gonna give us that width that you normally hear in those respace type sounds. And if you're not familiar with what a respace is, I highly recommend you just do a, do a quick Google search so that you can hear what I'm talking about or you can just sit through this video and watch it. Let's go ahead and turn on our second oscillator to give our bass a lower octave. And let's also turn on our B to go into the filter. Next thing we're gonna do is bringing a sub. Now for this sub, you can either go with a simple sine wave shape or we can go with a sauce shape. I'm not too sure yet which one we're gonna decide on, but let's just go ahead and go with the saw wave one for now. Make sure that that's also being passed through the filter. Now that may be too low, so let's just go ahead and bring everything up by one octave. Maybe bring this one an octave lower just to see what that would sound like. One thing I wanna point out too is that with sound design, there is never like a right or wrong way to do things. It's all about experimenting and trying things out and not getting frustrated early on, but rather just letting yourself little by little experiment until you arrive at a sound that you're happy with. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fine tune these oscillators so that there's a little bit of a semitonal difference. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set this bass to mono. The reason we're gonna set it to mono is because we're gonna to wanna to play a little bit with the portamento. Now we're gonna work a little bit on the release of the bass so that there's just a little bit more connection between each note. And then one of the cool things about Serum is the ability to really dive in deep into the envelope. As you can see here, the more that I zoom in, the more that I'm able to kind of play with this little shape here that's gonna affect the pluckiness or the brassiness of this sound. If I have the attack going like this, you don't really hear much of that quacky kind of sound that is typical of this genre. The next thing we're gonna do is play a little bit of the resonance up to taste. The higher we turn up the resonance, the more you'll notice that the sound kind of becomes a bit quacky, like, I don't know, like Daffy Duck or something. I think I like it right about there. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in a little bit of chorus just to kind of add some extra width to this bass. And as you can hear there, when the note changes, there's a little bit too much of that quackiness. So let's just go ahead and bring that down just a tad. I 
think a key thing that I want to point out here too with sound design is that it's always important when you're sound designing to try and play with a lot of different notes so that you can really hear how your synth is reacting, especially with a pattern like this. Now, the next thing we're going to do for a bass of this style is we're going to add a little bit of delay. And for a bass, you typically want to cut out a good amount of the low end on the delay. So that way you don't have any of those low end delay notes conflicting with the actual bass note. I think that's a pretty decent amount there. You can always play with the feedback to taste and kind of turn those down a little bit. The next thing I'm gonna do is add just a tiny bit of reverb. I'm gonna pick a preset reverb that I've set up. Cut out some of the lows just so that we don't have those low notes conflicting with the reverb and vice versa. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of EQ. I always like to add a little bit of top end right around 15 to 12K. You can also try using a bell-shaped curve, which can add a nice effect. Opening the cue up a lot. And then finally, what we're gonna do is maybe add a little bit of LFO to the fine tune on oscillator A. This is gonna give us a nice sort of analog feel. As you can hear there, what that bass has done is it's given us a nice little analog vibe so that it doesn't sound like it's just coming from a soft synth, but that could actually deceive the human ear to thinking that it might have come from a hardware synth. The last thing I want to show you is the way that we can actually set the stereo image of this sound. So right now this bass is really wide, which in a lot of cases is actually what we want. But let's say for instance that you want one of the basses to sort of stay mono. Well, what you do here is you would bring down the width of oscillator A, and you can bring that down to taste. This is a really useful technique if you really want to get your sound design down and so that you don't have a bass that's super wide that's just so stereo image that when it gets placed into a production of your track, it ends up sounding really, really, you know, too wide and too messed up. So hopefully this will give our bass a little bit more foundation. Conversely, if you turn both of them down, this is what it would sound like. A little bit too mono, right? So let's just bring this one back to 100 or maybe even 80. And then if we really want to play with the sound a little bit more, we can kind of bring the cutoff down. Now let's say we wanted the bass to actually kind of rise up every time that hit comes in. Well, there's a way to do that. We can actually create this third envelope and this envelope can go here and then let's play with this setting a little bit. As you can see there, our third envelope is doing the work on the cutoff filter, which is giving it a little bit more life, a little bit more energy. And it's really great to be able to use all three of these envelopes to achieve this effect. Now, let's go ahead and move on to our rolling bass. Now, how would we sound design a rolling bass? So the principles that we showed you in the last uh, preset are gonna be very similar to this one. So let's just go ahead and set up our oscillators. If you're wondering why I'm using four unison, it's just because I think for me, that's typically what I go to. It's just a habit. It's not like a right or wrong uh, setting, but it's just one that I typically go to. I like four voices, it just sounds a bit fuller. You can go up to eight if you'd like as well. 
Let's go ahead and put all of these through the cutoff filter. Next thing we're gonna do is bring this cutoff all the way down and then we're gonna drag envelope two to the cutoff filter. We're gonna turn the sustain all the way down so that we can really focus on the attack of this base. And then let's go ahead and play with the release a little bit. Let's also not forget to put this into mono. Let's work on the EQ a little bit, give this bass a little bit more high end. We can also give this bass a little bit of low end. And let's bring this down to what is probably the fundamental frequency, which, you know, let's go ahead and figure what that fundamental frequency is. So it says here that it's A1, and then let's go ahead and bring in a Pro Q to see more or less where this bass is hitting at. So it looks like it's all around A, which if we shift this over, it is at about 50 hertz. So let's go ahead and bring this bass up a little bit. And at this bass, we can bring this up to 50 hertz and bring this volume up. That EQ is already making a huge difference in the tone. And that sounds pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and play both of these bases back to back. And there you have it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, don't forget to comment and don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to making more of these for you.